Uh, next up is uh, uh, David Van Sickle from Asmapolis. Uh, I think Asmapolis is it's my most recent investment. Uh, based in Madison, Wisconsin, just down the road. And he really hits on three of the themes that I talked about as far as IT themes going to healthcare. Mobile, sensors, and data-driven decision making. And uh, Dr. Van Sickle will walk you through his company as well. Great. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. I actually came over from Madison so and named the company after Minneapolis. So I hope you uh, <laughs> hope I appreciate that. That's a big favor for you guys. So uh, I run a company called Asmapolis. I'm an asthma epidemiologist and a medical anthropologist by training. Started the company after a, sort of a frustrating career at the Centers for Disease Control doing outbreak investigations for the agency. Came to the School of Medicine in, in Madison and, and teamed up with a couple of people after a few years of building this technology in my lab there. Um, the sad fact about asthma is that despite all we know about the disease and how to treat it, the majority of people with, uh, with asthma in the U.S. are still uncontrolled. <coughs> that means they're walking around at a much higher risk of ending up in the emergency room or going to the hospital and having days and days with symptoms that are totally preventable with appropriate treatment. And you roll all that up, you end up with this um, really kind of frustrating and, and sad um, gap between where we should be able to be with asthma and what we've so far been able to accomplish. Millions of uh, unnecessary preventable emergency room visits and hospitalizations, all of which adds up to this enormous um, $50 billion direct cost in the U.S., uh, a, a, lot, a large portion of which is preventable. Um, a big problem is that people just don't realize a lot more could be done to prevent symptoms with, um, with the appropriate therapy. And since physicians also kind of lack good tools to understand how their patients are doing and often overestimate how well their asthma is controlled, there's, uh, they're, uh, they're, at, um, they're really at a disadvantage. They can't adjust treatment to help them accomplish better control. So um, what we started working on back in 2006 were the sensors that, like this that would grab onto a patient's inhaled medication and it'll let us track the time and frequency and location which patients are using both the day-to-day -day drugs that they use to prevent symptoms from occurring in the first place and then the medications that they use to relieve symptoms when they do occur. Um, the reason the latter is important is it's, it's essentially the best marker or vital sign we have of how somebody with asthma is doing. You see that their use of this rescue inhaler is going up. You know that um, more can be done to improve their, their treatment. And that really predicts emergency room visits and hospitalizations. So we build sensors that track uh, the, the use of these medications really passively, automatically. The patient has to do with essentially zero other than um, add it to the medication and pair it with their phone. Or with this Falcom uh, base station, we get through a partnership with, with Falcom. The phone also um, serves as really a platform to provide people with, uh, with self-management instructions. To, to simplify and strengthen day-to-day self-management in a way that, that helps people um, do a better job of achieving control um, in themselves or their kids. And then everything kind of rolls up to this online account that people can access, <coughs> uh, which not only provides a view of um, how they're doing with regard to their asthma, but also what's happening around them in the community. Because everyone with the disease, and probably everyone here knows somebody who has it, um, is struck by this mystery of like, why am I having symptoms here, now. And so what we can do is essentially use that information to walk people through a way to remove the triggers and exposures that cause them to develop symptoms, and we, and we end up with better control. Um, and uh, no fault of uh, the, the great team at, at UW, many of whom served on the guidelines committee, but the guidelines are like this it's like a 500-page CAPTCHA that you can't break, right? It's all this accumulated evidence and wisdom, you know, Bill Bussey walking the halls, like, uh, it all comes in this form, and it really just is not meaningful and actionable to a person um, in their daily life when it makes a difference or when it could be, um, when it could be useful. And so what we do is, um, you know, we have elves that carve up the guidelines and the literature and put it into an analytical engine so that the data that we see about your use of medications, about what's happening around you in the community, what's happening with climate, with work, and so forth, that can all be served up to you when it's important on your mobile phone or through SMS or through phone calls from our, our nurse as an educator. 
There's also, of course, we haven't forgotten you all, the provider side. So we give physicians tools so that they can see how uh, patients in their panels are doing, who's worsening, who's well controlled, and what are the potential reasons that, um, that someone might not be doing as well as they, they should be. Is it adherence with daily control of therapy? Is it overwhelming exposures to um, something on the job? We've, um, been, I want to switch gears for a second and talk about a long-running clinical trial we have that we, we started about a year ago now. Um, and just to give you a little bit of um, a view into the kinds of evidence we're seeing when we put this into clinical practice. With uh, Dignity Health, which is a, a, a large health system in the West Coast, formerly Catholic Healthcare West, who underwent a, a rebranding effort recently. Um, the trial is fairly large for, a, for an effort in digital health. It's about 480 patients now, split half and half in intervention and control group. And the thing I want to show you is, you remember I was talking about the use of that rescue medication. It's like your vital sign. If you're using it more than two days a week, our guidelines say you're, you're not well controlled. There's a lot more you can do. So what we see here when we split and, and uh, both groups, intervention and control, are being monitored uh, for, the, for the use of rescue medication, we're able to bring about in a very short period of time a dramatic reduction in the use of, of the bronchodilator. And overall, we're seeing significant improvements in adherence to the daily controller therapy um, across the study. And then the thing we're, we're most proud of is measurable and significant reductions in, in unnecessary ER visits and north of a 70% reduction in inpatient admissions um, in that intervention group. That's all I had. Thanks.